You can talk. To Hi, this here. is Brett with the Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company, Thursday Live, and uh, we are we are just getting into a business section this week. Um, we started last week on a few different things, and we're going to dive into pricing and um, some other creative stuff. So um, I think we've got a few things going now. Um, we've got some conversations that we're going to have with with Tom about if we can find him. He seems to be absent right now, but um, we wanted to get into the details of starting a business, and that's what we talked about last week. Hey, Brett. Yeah. Have you seen yep. my dad? I have a customer here with a deer, and I can't find him anywhere. I have not, and we are um, we're live, so um, you, we, can you? Just send them back. Oh yeah. Just send the customer it. back, and we're Are you we're sure starting. Um, maybe <laughs> um, we're talking about it anyways. We may as well. So we're gonna do pricing live. Oh, hey, buddy. My goodness. Oh, <laughs> not no. We're in May. What is this? I shot this big bad boy. <laughs> Four hundred yards. Four ten. <laughs> 400 yards away. Knocked him dead on the doornail. <laughs> I want, you I sure want did. Mounted. You sure did. You mount. You want him mounted. I asked and, all uh, around town, and the the lady up at Walmart, she said you were the man for the job. So I come down here to Metaska Taxidermy, <laughs> and I I brought you this. Well, I, I'm sure glad you did. Um, did anybody out front give you any? Did we talk about pricing and did we talk about getting him put in? Do you have Nothing. your Nothing. I think them women were all drunk out there. They <laughs> couldn't make heads or tails anything I was trying to say. Well, those girls out front are pretty busy. What can we um, do with them? I want well, something really special. Uh, really special. We've got all kinds of things. I had one mounted last year. Did, did we do it for you? No, but he did a good job. They told me he was the best. <laughs> he, was, he was good. as $350. $350. Wow, that's a... You got a really good deal last He's year. He's really good though, because he does like six or seven a day. I, I bet it was really nice. And look at this big bad boy. Is he not a beauty or that's what? A, that's a good one. That's a good one. You did good. 350 um, yards, 410. That, right through the eye. Pretty, there might be a little hole through the <laughs> eye here. Oh, we might have to do some fixing. Um, what do we got to do here? We've got, uh, you got a tag on him. That's good. We like to see that. Um, do we have, we didn't get you a price yet. We, we are, just so you know, we're eight ninety five for our deer heads. Dollars? Um, a little bit more than last year, but... eight ninety five. dollars What do you think? I'm an astro, astro... a rocket scientist? One of them. One of them. We do, we do deer heads for everybody. $8.95. Um, $895. Bucks. Can and, I make payments? And you sure can. You sure can. Um, we can set you up. We can, we can take payments. We like to have a 50% deposit. But we don't have to do that today. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. We can get you set up here, but um, kids we're going to have to know. fill out some. In, in these times, that's a lot of well, money. I don't have any kids <laughs> that I know of. Well, <laughs> but if I did, they'd have to eat. This is true. This is what are true. we going to do with him? Um, I think we need to look at some of the different poses that we can do, some of the things that we can do with the deer head. I don't um, need a whole half a deer, just the head's good. Just the head, just right up under here, or do you fine. want the whole shoulders? But I want his head, I want his antlers tipped up a little bit. So they look a little bigger. And to the right, I don't want a smiling one. The last oh. one that feller did, he was smiling. We don't do smiling deer. I don't want we a smiling do deer. We deer being deer. $850. Um, 895 bucks, 950 It just went up. I've been standing here for 10 minutes and it went up. Um, yes, and and we we charge eight ninety five, and we're a little over a year out too, so um, we might not see him back until the summer of next year. Where's he going? He he's got to go to the tannery. He's got to go. Uh, he's got to go a lot of places before he gets back to you. Eight hundred and ninety five dollars. Yeah. I'm gonna have to think about that. All right. Well, um, we can show you a few of the deer that we do. We've got. We've got a deer head right over here. Oh, we do a lot pretty. of extra little things with our deer. We've got, we've, we texture the nose. Uh, we've got really nice ear interiors. We've got nictitating membranes. If you shine a light, 
which I, I don't have a light right in front of me, but if you shine a light on one side, you can see the septum through the other. Why would um, I do that? <laughs> so, that we, so that you can see and you can show your buddies that this deer has the detail all the way back inside the nose. My eyes um, were a lot bigger than that, a lot bigger. Your deer eyes. Well, we after the order. third shot, they were like this. <laughs> I came pretty close. Um, he has a hole in his horn. Somewhere. Well, we can fix it. We can fix it. I will have to write that down on the ticket. That's We're going to charge a shop rate to do any of those fixes, but we can sure get that ticket. $895. Yeah. Jeez, yeah. is he made of gold? Might be. Holy Might smokes. Be. All right, well, I'm going to leave him with you. Okay, you want to leave him here? We but can don't get... start on him right away. i got to check with okay. the missus. Well, we can get him down in the freezer. We'll take some information. I think the girls out front can get some information from you, and we'll put a tag on him. We'll get him down in the freezer, and then you get back with us, and we'll get him started as soon as we get a deposit. She wanted a new Singer sewing machine. If I tell her that I'm going to have this deer mounted instead of a new Singer sewing machine, she's going to a brick. Well, we might be. We can probably do payments on this if you'd like. Oh, boy. Okay, I'm going to see how All it right. goes, but don't start on anything. I don't owe you anything yet, do nope, I? Nope, nope, absolutely not. They'll get a signature out front. We'll get an invoice written up for you. And uh, we'll take him down to the freezer. You can get back with us when you decide. I don't know if they're going to be sober when I go out there now. I hope so. There, you might find one. There's a few of them out there. Check, check all of them. Oh, my gosh. All right. $8.95. All right. Well, we'll, get him, we'll get him in the freezer. All right. Thank you. Don't thank start you. on me. All right. We, we won't. We'll get him froze. Well, and there you go. That could happen to you. <laughs> Just like it happened here, um, we have we have a wide variety of of prices and situations that we have to deal with. Some unforeseen things when when an animal comes in, and we have to be able to give a price on on our deer heads when a customer asks us. So so we've got to be able to justify what we have. And you can see I was caught a little off guard by by our May Hunter, who brought in a really nice deer that he shot with his 410 at 400 and however many yards away. And uh, anyway, we got, we got this deer in, um, and we're going to get some information from our, our hunter and see if we can get him taken care of. But, but we need to be prepared for anything, and the only way to really do that and do it responsibly today is to make sure that we understand all of our expenses so that we are able to explain those ex expenses and costs and timing to our customer. So hopefully with, with any luck, Tom will be stopping in anytime soon and uh, might have a seat here and we can, we can get started on some of these things. <laughs> who? Who? We haven't seen Tom. <laughs> I know. Uh, wink, wink. Uh, that's fun. That's fun. Um, so we have we run into people all the time that are telling us that they watch our live and they are going to get started in the taxidermy business. And um, we just want to touch today a little bit on one of the bigger chunks of business and operation, and that is the pricing and how we charge for the services that we give. And uh, we're gonna, we'll dive into some of those things. Um, I think we have, some, we have some ideas here on the general idea of how much time it takes to mount a deer, but there's a lot more information that we need to go into. We need to talk about what does before how much time really factors in. We also need to find out what it costs us to mount a deer. And here, what did I miss? <laughs> you missed a lot, man. Thank I ran into some guy out that. in the parking lot, she brought a deer in, I guess, huh? A uh, big one. He was a excited. He was really excited. He oh. shot it at 495 yards at uh, with a 410. I heard the story. Oh, you did. You did. Yes. Yeah, said was... said he had to go check with his wife. Works for the government or something. Astro, <laughs> astrophysicist, I think he said he was. Yeah. Uh, marine biologist. <laughs> uh, that's fun. Um, well, I tried to stall as long as I could. <laughs> I told him that we were uh, going to talk about pricing, mm -hmm. and uh, 
maybe you can. And you told them that's what they'll end up with every, every other day. single day. <laughs> um, no, I didn't. I didn't even get that far. I was, I was not prepared. And I told them that that's the most important thing is that we can be prepared to explain to our customers what our prices are and understand. So you have some stuff there that we kind of talked well, about earlier. That you know, the, the first thing, um, I don't know where you left off because I was talking to Clem <laughs> yeah, yeah. and his big buck out there. Yeah. Um, a lot of you people, we're kind of kind of catering to not only the beginner, you know, there's people mm -hmm. out there that um, are just beginning taxidermy and they're picking prices out of the air. There's people that have been in taxidermy all their lives and still maybe need a little pep talk or a refresher on pricing. Absolutely. And nothing applies more strongly than it does today, you know, about pricing. You know, a few years yeah. ago you could get lax in your pricing and um, you're going to be fine, and right now you could be out of business pretty fast. It could happen really fast. The thing, this climate, things are changing, and pricing, more than anything, I think, is going to keep people either either sink or swim, yeah. floating or not. Yeah. And it so. kind of depends on if you're doing it for a hobby. Um, say you're, you know, a collector of some sort. It's just your hobby, or um, whatever, you know, a wood carver, whatever hobbies are meant to relax you and to enjoy what you're doing and do it yeah. in a you know not not a timely fashion um, you're not trying to make a living at it so a hobby should be fun and relaxing if you want to do taxidermy for the hob as a hobby just to relax and enjoy it um, pricing isn't as important but sometime you may develop your taxidermy skills to where they are in demand and people want you to do things for them and after a short time you're going to start turning your hobby into a business and then pricing comes into play and it's more important than absolutely. it ever was before absolutely it feels like pricing and business go hand in hand but pricing is just a small part of business so we can we talked about earlier parts last week and hopefully today we can unravel a little bit of the mystery of how to keep afloat. When I first started, my guy that taught me taxidermy said, you call the taxidermist on the street and find out what he gets for, you know, a duck. And so that's exactly what I did. I came home and I, I called uh, Leroy Morton down the street here and I said, what do you get for a redhead? And, and he said, oh, did you get yourself a nice redhead? And I said, oh, I got a beauty, you know, on $45. $45, okay, thanks a lot. Hung up on him, you know. Called a guy up, you know, by Fairmont, and, and what do you get for a duck? $35. My instructor said, you're not gonna be as good as the best. You're not gonna be as bad as the worst. Nestle in there somewhere. So I figured $35 sounded good to me. Um, I didn't, you know, my price didn't reflect what if I had a daughter in college or, or car payments or house payments. Miraculously, I was living with mom and dad. I had no children. I that had helps. no bills whatsoever. My mom made me a sandwich every day to keep <laughs> me alive, and I was able to get by. Now, what if I had a house payment? What if I had kids in college? What if I had a car payment? Um, didn't have those expensive cell phones that you have now, but what if um, I would have been out of business before I ever started in business. So everybody's situation is different. Not all yeah. people can survive on the same amount of money. Yeah. So I think where we can start with them is we can kind of provide a guideline, but everybody's going to have to tailor the information to their own that we situation. To, yep. 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 Everybody's different. And if you need more money and your work is similar to the other taxidermists, you're just going to have to be a better salesman. And that's a whole nother part of the game. And then you tell people, I'm the best. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think uh, what I always did was try to establish in like, like uh, car mechanics and things like that, they try to establish a shop rate. Yep. And a shop rate is what it costs to run this building, whether it's a two-stall garage attached to your house or it's a separate building. Um, if it's a basement, your shop rate would be much less expensive than if it was downtown Main Street. And mm -hmm. so establishing a, 
shop rate because those expenditures go on all day long. So by and by shop rate, you're meaning cost to operate overhead. Got it. Got it. So so we've got to figure out what it costs to have. Oh, you got a shop. calculator right I there. I know we're going to punch some buttons in a minute. Um, but what goes into shop rate? So. Well, I probably forget a lot, and here, this is, I think many taxidermists out there do the same thing. They want to make a living in taxidermy. They want to show people, you know, their wives and family that it's profitable and they can make a living, so they tend to minimize things. Yes. And, and especially when they start out, maybe their work isn't as good to command a higher price, but they still want to get the work yeah. in, so they want to charge less, so they minimize their yep. prices that they actually need. Yeah. I think I think everybody's guilty of doing that. I know, I know. I was as guilty I did as anyone. It. I did yeah, it for. I just, still do. Yeah. Um, but shop rate would be like your your telephone, yeah. gas for your car, um, what it takes to heat your building, cool your building, yeah. rent for your building, depending on whether it's part of your house yeah. or or a separate rental, yeah. um, power, um, water, garbage. Yep. Anything. Um, what I always tell people is go through your checkbook or your credit card receipts and look what you spend every month, every single month. Those are just always there. And um, it doesn't matter if you use that building, if you're not in it, if you're not mounting anything in it, you're still gonna get those bills. You're gonna get, sometimes it's a payment, you might have a $500, $1,000 payment, you know, house payment or rent even. Sometimes it's uh, um, nothing more than a spare building on your property that you have to heat and cool. So these would all be, this isn't money coming in, this is money going out. So this is an expense. Let's do the out first. Yeah, to get right. We'll make yeah, it sound. We haven't got anything in yet. So. Um, why don't you uh, read me some of these and I'll write them yeah. down. Yeah. And just so they can get a visual of this. You should be writing um, you right nice. And I, I think, I think what we have here is all information pertaining to a small shop. This isn't this studio that has 30 people running around every day. This is one individual in a garage or small building. My is first that? shop was a small, small shop. And I think my shop rate when it was, you know, got to be a vibrant shop was probably $12 an hour. Yeah. When we came to this larger facility with a lot, you know, bigger property, bigger bills, bigger heat and electricity. Um, we were up to $35 an hour every single hour to keep. That's this. going out. That's, that's going not out. coming in. <laughs> um, this just write down shop rate here and we'll give them an idea. You can All do right. this. Um, look at your uh, checkbook, look at your um, um, credit card receipts and figure out. You can all do this on your own, whether you've had a tax me business for, you know, 30 years or if it's brand new and you're just starting for the first time. So yep. you want to start, you want to figure a shop rate yep. or you can call it overhead. Yep. Okay, what do you got? On the first item is a building payment and whether it's your house, a percentage of your house or a rental, um, you got to figure out what it costs you to have a, a okay. building to work in and, and we've got, we'll put $500 a month. And my first yeah. commercial shop actually was $500 a month. Yeah. And, and that was how long ago? That was 35 years to 40 yeah. years ago yeah. was my first shop, $500 yeah. a month. I couldn't afford $500. The landlord came. He knew I kind of wanted it. He said, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you um, the first year for $300 a month. And wow. then the second year for $400 a month and we'll work you up to 500 and I stayed there wow. for about 10 years. Wow, should go back. <laughs> um, uh, next cost that is gonna be a part of operating a business is a phone. Um, people have to be able to get a hold of you. Um, average phone bill today, I think depending upon your social media, we've put down 100 bucks. Um, that's probably pretty average cell phone bill. I think bill. there's a lot of higher. Yeah. So you're going to just look at what you're paying for that building. You're going to look at your phone, whether yep. you use it for personal or business or whatever, because it's yep. going to be your business phone. Um, the next one we have is electricity. And this goes up considerably when you start running a business. 
when you have freezers running 24 hours a day, um, electricity can get pretty high in the summertime. We've got 200 bucks. Um, air conditioning, air you conditioning have to have climate is an control. expensive one. Yep. Um, heat and air, so forth. Um, the next one is water. And a lot of utility, we'll, we'll say water or utilities, there's a lot that goes into that, but um, we've got 100 bucks for water. Um, gas, again, that's probably going to be your heat. Um, that's going to be another 100 bucks. You people down south probably don't have to worry about that. I bet, they, I bet their AC goes up as their gas goes down. Now you all can do this at home. Just plug your own figures in yeah. to this. And you might have, when you go through your checkbook, you might, gonna, you might say, oh, they didn't include this or they didn't include yeah. that. If you find something in there, add it in. It's gotta be yeah. paid for. It's a constant expense. Um, another one is taxes. Um, we've got building taxes, per, um, we've got business taxes. We've got 50 bucks a month that are going into that. And that's a whole nother can of worms. Um, and then miscellaneous. And this is one that I think catches a lot of things for us. Some of the exam examples were lawn care, um, fuel for, for running to town, going to the hardware store, um, maintenance. Maintenance is a big one. That would be snow removal. It might be uh, mowing any of those things, and we've got 250 bucks a month going toward uh, miscellaneous. Um. You know, something we didn't, um, which I would include in this is, you need a Dremel tool, your Dremel tool went to pieces, oh, or your yeah. drill, or you have the wrong size, um, or a drill bit that you don't have, you need a spade bit to do yeah. a pedestal mount of an elk or something like that. Um, we cover that in miscellaneous, so yeah. some, sometimes it's gonna be quite high, sometimes it will be not used at yeah. all. We put 250 there. Okay. And that's, uh, we kind of kept it pretty basic and wrapped it up there. And when we totaled that up, it came to $1,300 mm. just to run the building. You're going to spend that. That's an expense. Every month to have a business. What do you think I am, an astrophysicist? <laughs> <laughs> um, $1,300. Um, now, what I always like to equate that to is, is you, I mean, the gas is going on while you're sleeping, the water's probably going on while you're sleeping, electricity, phone, all that stuff's running while you're sleeping, but you only really have work hours in the month and we figure work hours at 160 hours, 40 yep. hour weeks. Now, some of you would say 40 hours a week, I like this tax me gig so much that I'm gonna do 80 hours a week because it's so much fun. Good for you, you keep yeah, doing that, keep, you know? Um, but, but figure a 40 hour week, 160 hours in a month to pay this, which comes yep. out to about, what, eight bucks? Um, comes out to right at $8 an hour. And, and we got that just one more time by dividing uh, 160 by, or 1300 by 160. So you got 160 hours in the month yep. to make that amount. That yep. didn't make you any money, right? Oh, no. That That's did what, nothing that, but pay for you to be here. Yep, that paid everybody else so that they'll let you stay another month. Um, and you do have a note here that a large shop might need to add significantly more. Um, could be 25 to $75 an hour. And that's not unrealistic. The more, the, you know, the bigger you get, the more equipment you have, uh, the bigger truck you have, trailer. I mean, yeah. um, some of, I've, seen, I've seen people deliver some of these mounts in brand new wrapped trailers that yeah. are not cheap. So yeah. this just put uh, $8 an hour up here as your shop rate. I'll get rid of all this other. So those are costs. Now, every car mechanic has to do this. Every um, carpenter that has a carpentry shop, cabinet maker, they all have to figure out what that building's costing them yeah. um, to be in it and to be able, have a place to work. Yep. Um, 
some more cost while we're on the subject of costs. Um, should we, since we just took in a deer head, should we figure out what that deer head is going to cost Kay. us? Sure. Um, so we've got a materials list here for a deer, for just an average white-tailed deer. Um, we've broken some of these things out. First thing we're going to need is a form. Um, I think everybody has has seen whitetail forms go up over the last 10 years. And it, if you haven't refigured this cost in the last five, I think they probably should. It, it wasn't be very long ago that I told the uh, competitors choice sculptors, I said, you're going to see $50 deer heads. Mark my words. Yep. And, and we they saw them. They were in the 30s in the at that rear time. view mirror now. <laughs> what um, do you got for form? So forms, we averaged it over, over several different uh, options and we've got eighty dollars for the form and it has not arrived at your door yet so we're going to have some shipping involved in that um that's a big controversial that's not cheap issue no um, we see we see those big numbers um, but responsibly purchasing if we figure 20 bucks um, per form and and of course purchasing uh Multiple forms can bring that down, but you kind of have to plan on one at a time. Um, that's going to bring us to 100 bucks, $100, just right off the bat. Um, You're pretty good at that in your head. <laughs> um, we got to get it tanned next. Um, we're going to send them away to a commercial tannery. Got it. And that, we figured, is about a $60 expense. And we got to get it there, to and we got to get from. it back. Yeah. And what so we've got shipping there? twice there, and we figured thirty bucks. Um, some of you are rolling your eyes. Some of you are thinking, "Oh wow, they spend a lot." But um, thirty bucks to get it there and back. It's going to bring us to ninety. So we are flirting with two hundred dollars of expenses, mm -hmm. and we haven't done anything yet. Um, we still need eyes. At 15 bucks. You know, I don't look at these prices often because we have the supply company. If we need eyes, we, you know, requisition eyes. We need ears, we requisition <laughs> ears. And we actually don't see the invoices. Um, when I looked up, I just looked in the McKinsey catalog to do this, and and eyes were $15. They were six yep. the last time I looked. And and that's just an average pair. If you want to, you can spend more money on eyes. Um, now we're not going to add shipping to that because you'd have stuck it in with your deer unless yeah, you forget. Hopefully, hopefully, yes. Um, another thing we need are ears. Uh, we like to use ear liners. Um, a good set of ear liners today will figure eight bucks. Again, they can pay more if they want to. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. Um, I didn't put a nose uh, in your form. No, we should have. We should have. We should have added a nose. Um, glue. This was an eye opener. That was an eye opener. <laughs> <laughs> um, a gallon of glue. Uh, we figured about uh, fifty bucks for a gallon of hide paste. Any of the high end, the good hide paste, the hide paste that you know are going to stick, are fifty dollars a gallon. Yeah. And I looked at that gallon and I thought, how many deer? I, I mean, I usually don't calculate out how many deer and ration it out. Um, I figured we can't get much more than five out of a gallon, I yep. don't think. I, I think that's fair. And so uh, five over 50 bucks, that's $10 a deer just for glue. Um, critter clay is another one. Clay is important to what we're doing. We're going to build our ear butts. We'll do nose pads, um, um, any, any little stuff in the face. Again, out of a small five pound, uh, five pounder, Probably going to get maybe five deer at 35 bucks. That's seven dollars a deer head. Um, and then we can add miscellaneous expenses. We might be high, but you, mm -hmm. you still have epoxies, you have paints, we have thread, we have all kinds of stuff that's not in here. But if we take these big numbers, um, total those up, we're already at 230 bucks. This is outgoing. That's your materials outgoing. We're yeah. bleeding money. Yep, yep, we're bleeding money. Um, so that's your materials to get this project going. Now, 
And don't um, minimize, like you mentioned, the paint and the glues and the epoxies. Yeah. How many of you mix the perfect amount of epoxy or do you leave a big old gob on the table that has to go in the garbage because yeah. it's hardened up on you? Or yeah. the paint, you know, yeah. you got a little bit of paint, you put it in a cup and you airbrush or you put it in a bottle and didn't use it all and end up, you know, dumping some. Um, rarely do we mix exactly the right amount. Yeah. Has to be some waste in there. And, and you won't feel that until um, you go to reorder. Next time you have to order three different paints, um, that's not in your budget here. So make sure that somewhere it is. Um, so now we've got shop rate and then we have expense. And the next category that we talked about was, of course, labor. And that's what it's going to cost to get this deer done so that we can get money back. But again, we have to consider that as a, as a cost. We got a year for that guy that brought that one in. Oh, I don't know. I think he's going to come back and I don't want him to come back. So <laughs> we right. better get it done quick. Um, labor. So this is something that when you say minimize, I think I know I personally am guilty of it in every aspect. But um, when we broke it out, there are some things to consider more than just the actual working time with the deer. Um, we could have talked to our customer friend here He'd for an stayed. hour. He would have told he that story. He wanted to stay for dinner. Yeah, yep. we, we could have been doing that. So you have to figure a, a good conversation with your customer, invoicing, getting good directions. You're going to communicate with them more than once, more than likely. I, you'd probably be back next week to bring us some more money. And for as many times as you'll probably call to see how yeah. often it's done, every time you get, you get a phone call from him, you're going to have to stop doing what you're doing. That was going yep. really well, flushing a deer or whatever. Go wash your hands, go to the phone, yep. not done yet, you know, <laughs> call again, go back and start it, again. I mean, you really lose 10, 15 minutes each time you stop. It really is a part of it. So we're going to figure an hour generously because some of our customers aren't going to take as much time as others, but um, we're going to add one hour into that, into that time. Ooh, I like that public relations. And, and when you're busy and things are coming in right and left, you have to get, I mean, they're excited. This is a oh, huge, yeah. huge deal for them and you have to spend the time with them and you have to stop spending the time with yeah. them so you can get some work done. So it's a yeah. real fine thing. You don't want to offend them and you want to ooh and ah about what they got and listen to the story. Um, but sometimes it can add into an hour and for sure, by the time you stop, deal with the customer, um, write up the invoice and things like yeah. that, it's almost always an hour, I would yeah. say. Pretty easy. Um, now we got the customer out, we've got the deer laying on the counter, we've got to cape him, measure him, flesh him, salt him, and basically just get him ready to go to the tannery or to be tanned. So we're gonna call that um, about two to three hours. Some deer are going to go really fast, some deer are not. Um, but we'll put, we figure, two to three hours. And I can, I can hear people through the I know. television line going, two to three hours, man, what do those guys do? Watch it flesh itself or yeah. what, you know? Yeah. Um, a quality mount depends on this right here. Um, the better job you do and the more thorough you do, you're going to cut your slippage down. You're going to have an easier time when it comes to mounting. You're going to easy sewing, um, less damage. This is a key, key step. And when we yeah. say two to three hours, if you look back at oh, one of our shows a while back, we, you fleshed the deer cape when yep. we did the tanning oh, demonstration. Yeah. Just look at how much care. We split our ears to the very, very edges. Um, Take the cartilage out if you're tanning it yourself. Um, leave the cartilage in and take it out later when you, you know, that would cut that down a little bit if you do it when it comes back from the tannery. Um, take the cartilage out of the, the nose. Split the lips really, really thoroughly so salt gets down in there. You're not going to have slippage around the lips. This is yeah. so important. Yeah. Can't tell you how important it is. Allow plenty of time there. Um, we've got to, moving on, we've got we've to salt it a second time. Um, we've got to pack it up, we've got to ship it, 
um, we've got to deliver it to a shipper. Even if that's just picking up the telephone and calling someone to come and pick it up, you still have to consider that as a time. And we, we put only 30 minutes in that's, there. That's a shorty, isn't it? That's, that's assuming the best. Um, another thing we've got to get back, and, and I, a real good area that people can minimize, is unpacking it. Now it's back from the tannery. We've got to look up the code. We've got to go get our code book. Um, deer don't always come back on our, at a real convenient time, so um, we like to get ours taken care of right away and just had some come back not too long ago. Did um, we soak him? Then we've got to soak him up. And maybe it's a wet tan. Um, explain your wet tan uh, process because that's real important. A lot of people take them right out and measure yeah. them. Yep. Um, so with a wet tan, in order for the tannery to get them shipped, they are going to, even though they're wet, um, they're still going to slightly tumble them. They're going to get as much of that water weight out as they can, just as a as a as a courtesy to you, so they're not shipping 30 pounds of water in every deer. But um, they come back to us, and they are stiff. They're wet and pliable, not like a dry tan. But um, we have found the best results by um, actually rehydrating them. So we'll rehydrate them, mix up a rehydration a bath. Out of them. Yep. And, and one of the things that we do is we'll take a green measurement early, write that down when, before he goes to the tannery. Way back up in, uh, way back up in um, that step. Yep, yep. Very, one of the very first things we do as soon as we get the carcass out of it, we'll take a quick reference measurement just to have something to come back. And with some of these capes we've got back recently, um, we notice a couple inches of gain by rehydrating them. So we'll soak them up. Um, let them sweat overnight, and then we'll come back the next day, and we will spin them out, um, dry them with a towel, just blot them dry, and then we'll lay them out and measure them. And that is a labor and a process that takes time to get a good, accurate tan measurement so that we can order the right form. Um, and this is a measurement that it, your form has to be. It doesn't yes. make any sense to get one bigger than this, and you don't yeah. want to make anything smaller than that. This is important. And the reason we take one way back here also is kind of as, as a safeguard. Um, I can, that reminds me of taxidermy shows where people have come to us with, we'll take all the forms you've got, all the 19 inch forms you got, left and right. That's their choices. Yep. And, and we've had that and that's, we go to a little more care than that. But um, that's what we're looking for in that 30 minutes. We, we also have to order a form. And we can go down to the basement. It works pretty good for us, but we still have to pick the right one so Joe doesn't have to pour four for us to get yep. one. Yep, yep. Um, so we spend time with the catalog. Is we spend time with the measurements. And nope, we've got um, order form at 30 minutes. Okay. And I challenge anybody to order form this day and age in 30 minutes. We've got to pick up the phone. We've got to talk to the wonderful people on the other end of the line, put in our order. Um, there's, there's a lot to do there in deciding what your, what your mannequin is going to okay. be. So um, you could, these are all, all times, and we call them these things. You might have something else that you want to add into those. Whatever your time comes out to, ours came out to... I think I put four. Four hours. But uh, I minimized it a little bit. So Clem didn't get mad. So we didn't blame it all on him. Um, four hours. It's now an easy working number. Pure labor. Yep. yep. And for that four hours, we need eight dollars an hour just to pay for the heat and electricity, right? Yep. Yep. So, so those four hours, not real productive. Can we I haven't take that done off a bunch. Yeah. Are we? Is everybody with us? See, Are I'm real good at this anyone? because. In, okay. in, in grade school, okay. the nuns made me stand up to the board and write, I will not split on the floor. I will not spit on the floor a thousand times. So that's why I'm so good at this. Um, okay, we got four hours. Um, four hours at $8 an hour. That's our shop rate. 
and that's going to be thirty-two dollars, correct? Right yep. up here. Yep. And we haven't even mounted the deer yet. We just got him back from the tannery in order yep. to form. Yep. So now we're going to say just in the interest of time, we're going to say mounting and finishing. What's it take to mount and finish a deer for us? Um, don't minimize, but maybe we're min <laughs> we might be minimizing a little bit. Um, uh, we might be. Um, okay, here's how we arrived at this. We have time cards. Yeah. And, and uh, is there one over there I can grab? Mm, yeah. Yep. Hold on. I'll be right back. Don't go. Unless I run into that guy over here again. <laughs> uh, and this is, these are, these are in-depth time studies done over several different employees over many years, um, averaging out different techniques, times, what it takes to get a deer head put together. Um, and this is kind of what we've arrived at today. Now we haven't done it lately. But typically, if you come into our shop, everything is going to have um, the customer's invoice pinned to it. It's going to have a blue card like this pinned to it. It's got the person's name, what it is, what the pose is, um, habitat or base, little information on it. And then it says date and employee. So let's say uh, Brett mounted the zebra, okay? Um, he's going to write um, mounted zebra, or Brett Wingfield and the date mounted the zebra. Now we know that that he probably started in the morning and and you know sewed for a couple days so he can put down you know 12 hours of sewing or 14 hours of sewing whatever it happens to be. Each time somebody touches that animal um, they're gonna write their name or initial it. They're gonna write what they did and how much time they spent on it. Um, anytime um, anybody does anything to it we want to know because that's going to get all added up and one of these on one zebra isn't going to give you much enlightenment yeah. but if you have especially with deer we have hundreds of these over the yeah. years yeah. and we can take them from a period and we can add up 50 of these divide it by 50 and we know that every single deer that comes in takes you know, 11.8 hours. You know, it's very easy to do that, but you can't do it with one. Um, that's why get in the habit now of making yourself a little card like this. Make it out of cardstock or something, something heavy um, that uh, um, you can just keep pinned to the animal. And then um, we used to take these to Vicky's desk and lay them on Vicky's desk, and she would come in here and she'd say. How come it took you this long to do this? You know, we've been through that lots and lots yeah. and lots. But uh, she's the money person and keeps us accountable to make sure we have all of our times recorded on here. And um, if you can take 10 elk and look at if they're similar poses, a pedestal is different, of course, than a wall mount. But take 10 wall mount elk, and this one took 16 hours, that one took 18 hours, this one took 20 hours, add up the three, divide by three, and you're gonna get a pretty average of what you should be able to do an elk with. Um, some of you out there are really, really fast and you can sew like a machine um, and are exceptional, do exceptional work. Some people are very, very slow. Um, you gotta either pick up speed or develop methods to do things you know, quicker and you can make more money. But um, so anyway, that's what the, the time cards help us do. Yep. And oh, and you said, what was our time? About um, 12? We're, so we were finished mounting and finishing. Um, we're about 12 total hours. And that, that does include those previous four. Now, I can hear, like I said, a lot of people out there saying, 12 hours, what do you do? Yeah. Take, <laughs> take a nap in the middle? <laughs> in between. Yeah. Um, these are nice, and we're proud, very, very proud of them. When we yeah. give them to a customer, you're not going to find a seam. You're not going to find drumming. You're going to find a really attractive, nicely groomed animal, and people yeah. want to come back for that kind of quality. Um, but 
mounting, finishing, we take a lot of pride in our finish work too, as far as the airbrushing and the painting and the pan pastels and, and really coming up with a natural soft finish that looks lifelike. Yeah. Um, yeah. So 12 hours. And when we look back at all of our cards, no matter who we've had employed here, um, doing it you know, the way that, that we like things done, um, you'll come up with a whole bunch of 10 and 3 quarters, 11, 12 and a half, 13 hours, you know, and add yeah. them all together, divide by that number. Yep. Um, 12 hours, now for 12 hours, do we need to do that times the shop rate? think so we might only need to add eight more since we started with four we were already four hours in so oh we might I see here I see you're not gonna minimum maximize are you? <laughs> no I'm minimizing okay so we already did um, four hours for the for here yep that's this one okay yep. now we're gonna add eight more hours yep um, at eight eight dollars yeah and uh, that comes out to uh, what do you got Eight and eight is sixty-four. Eight dollars equals sixty-four more dollars. Yeah. This is getting up there. Yep. And so for our twelve hours of time total, we have ninety-six hours of overhead involved in it. That's cost going out um, plus our materials. Okay. So add this up. Yep. Three hundred and twenty-six. Three hundred and twenty-six dollars for every deer head that comes that scared in. Me. I thought you were going to say something gonna else. Go I was going to be embarrassed on no. national TV. <laughs> no, um, three hundred twenty-six dollars. That's the time and the material so far. Yep. In a deer head. Yep. Some people don't charge much more than that. Nope. And that's that's where this is really important because we have to figure out how much to charge, knowing that. For every deer that comes in, it's costing us $326. We go to a lot of shows, you know, around the country, and we hear often, often, often of $500 deer heads. You yeah. know, $500 deer heads, um, they're making 100 and 180 bucks, $175 yeah. on a deer head. Yeah. So it's, that doesn't add to very, very much in their pocket. In fact, I've got some notes here on, on just that so the pricing study based on this if you want to if we want to go off of that you and kind of figure out how much we're going to cost so um Here's if we one. have if we have a 500 hundred dollar deer head we have a 600 hundred dollar deer head we have a 700 hundred dollar deer head we can say, we can just look at these three different prices that we've pulled out of the air, and we'll figure based on that $326 of cost how much we're going to make. And it's really simple. So the $500 minus $325 of expense is going to be $175. And you can call it what you want. I don't know that we call it profit, but that's what we got for our labor. So we made $175 for our 12 hours, but let's say... That's less than let's quick trip. Go. It, it is, it is. But let's say we've got really fast people doing this and they can do it in 10 hours. We got some people that can do it in 12 or some people that take 14. We'll just see what that does to it. And by taking this $175 over 10, over 10 hours, um, you made seventeen fifty an hour. That sounds all right. Mm -hmm. um, if it took you twelve, you made fourteen dollars and fifty eight cents an hour. And if it took you fourteen hours to make one hundred and seventy five bucks, you made twelve dollars and fifty cents an hour. And I know our quick trip is paying right here right now. So for our so you gas can, station attendant, you can wash windshields for that. Yes. Um, so now that's, that's a $500 deer head. But shouldn't but you allow something for the fun you're having and satisfaction? Maybe. Um, yes, you should, but you should still get paid for it. Um, if we did a $600 deer head, let's just put some numbers to that. 
um, 600 minus our $325 of expenses is going to give you $275 for your labor. And at 10 hours, that's a pretty easy one. That's $27.50 an hour. Um, at 12 hours, we're going to make a little less. That's going to be $22.91 an hour. And if it took us 14 hours to make 275 bucks, we made $19.64 an hour. And we can do better. the same thing at, at seven. Um, and that is all variable on your shop rate. We had a student yeah. um, that was actually a, a pretty decent student, did a really nice job, and went and rented a big building at $1,600 a month on oh, a main street yeah. of a small town, yeah. um, decided to tan everything himself, and tanning hides, those of you that have done it, you get the satisfaction of doing a nice job and getting very, very proficient at it, but not quite as proficient as a tannery. Um, it's cheaper, but the labor invested is much more. Much um, more. But just by changing this situation right here can greatly affect your numbers over there. Oh, absolutely. And, and that $1,600 a month shop payment can make or break you. Um, if you, so if this isn't enough for you, we even put down 700 with our, still at our shop rate of 325. And doing that, we made $475 by taking those two apart. So $475 over 10 hours, that's pretty good. That's 47.50 an hour. That sounds good. Um, at $12 an hour, or at 12 hours, um, that's going to come out to $31.25. Oh, I said 4750 I meant $37.50. Oh, that's right, $47.50. Um, this is going to be $31.25, and at 14 hours, that's going to be $26.79. You know, coming back from the World Show and talking to all the tax firms out there um, who are concerned about shortages and, and prices going up, which they definitely are, um, we heard a whole lot of $900 deer heads. Many, many, many. There's where my mistake was. Never do public math. I heard that <laughs> once. Yeah, and you got that, a question? I do. So for fish, do you go through the same process as you're demonstrating for each species, or do you charge a shop labor charge plus a fixed rate for each? I would do bass size fish, or I'd do yeah. it maybe trout different than a bass. Yeah. And um, a minimum for pan fish, little fish. Yep. But you still have that same process. That shop. Same. Yep. Yep. You have your shop rate plus your time, and off of those blue cards, you can determine how much time it mm -hmm. takes you to do them. And you have to bring these numbers together because um, if if you're thinking that you're making fifty thousand dollars a year and when you finally do the math at the end of the year and you only made 24 um we need to come back and figure it out so some of these businesses are not around as, as um, long as this others. is actually it can be very very fun but it can be very very eye-opening to your business mm -hmm. you know to where um when you think you're doing really really, really well maybe you're not quite doing as well as you yep. think you are and and also, just picking a number out of the air, that may not be very responsible either. Without um, going through this. Yep, yeah. yep. And, and that's one of the two people is going to suffer. It's either you or your customer. Sure. And you want to be honest sure. and realistic with, with them. What do you have um, for us, Kate? All right. So Doug Peters is wondering, your shop rate is confusing me. Why isn't that added in on the right chart? Say it again. Your shop rate is confusing me. Why isn't that added in on the right chart? Okay, um, so what she's asking is, how come this, this number isn't added? And actually, we used $325. We rounded instead of this being 326. This is the shop rate and materials. Um, we used 325, and that is right here. So our $500 deer head, 
minus our 325 is where we got our $175 of, of labor rate or I, I, so the shop the rate line. per hour is figured yep. in times 12 yep. hours in your deer head or right four there. hours in your deer head. Yep. So I don't know if that answered it. Did we clear it. that up? That's hope we Let did. us know if we did not. Just um, just know that you got yep. your your heat's going on while you're working, your air conditioning's going on while you're working, your water bill is, you know. Absolutely, you're going to have those every month. Um, I've got one other fun little number here just to throw at at people so you have say you arrived at seven hundred dollars as your deer head price and we're going to figure 12 hours of working time in that your hourly um your hourly profit or your hourly rate at 31 dollars and 25 cents an hour that you made is going to yield you for one year which a 40 hour work week times 52 weeks of working that's no vacation but at 52 weeks that's 2080 hours at $31.25 is going to be $65,000 that's what you would have made gross that's not taxes that's not no insurance there's no vacation you can start whittling that down pretty fast in order to make $65,000 on just whitetail because we see a lot of people that say I just want to be a deer guy or a whitetail guy mm -hmm. um, to do this for 2080 hours you're gonna have to do 173 deer heads per year that's a lot that scares me that's I would thing. never want to do that um, there are guys that do 300, 300 deer, yeah, 300 deer heads and they're number, gorgeous yeah. and they're fantastic yeah. but um, that's a lot of work to make that number. And you would, you would go through, we would go through this process, whether it's white tail mule deer antelope, kind of the same process. Elk may be the same thing, a little bit different figures. Um, but we would do that for our game heads. We would do it for our birds. Yeah. Same, same process to arrive at a figure yeah. we can live on. And we do it for our fish. And then um, you're, you're not going to have many people won't have 173 deer heads you might have 73 deer heads yeah. what are you going to do what am i going to do with my time with the other 100 you're going to enter in your fish enter in your birds that were derived from the same formula yeah yeah or if you're not doing birds and fish you add in your part-time job that goes along with it because if you don't do 173 deer heads your number's not going to and be if you don't have the work to do that's what you'll do you'll you'll suffice with a you're going to supplement with a part-time job and become a proficient advertiser and um, you know make your products more desirable be more creative make your products neater cleaner yeah um, more innovative to where you are desirable um, anybody we talk to this day and age a lot of taxidermists are so far behind they can't keep up. Um, can't get help, they can't keep up. Um, prices are going up, it doesn't dissuade customers. You know, there's yep. too much taxidermy work, it seems like, for the good taxidermists out there. Yep. Uh, we've got a question, why isn't the $8 an hour added to 17 an hour? Or is the shop rate what you're paying your workers? No, the shop rate would be your overhead for your costs that are going on while you're working. Yeah. Um, and why wasn't it added to the what? To the $17 an hour. Um, the shop rate was actually taken out because that was an expense. Um, the shop rate is actually the cost of our air conditioning, our water, those, that's an expense. So it's not added to, this is, this is an income, um, that's an outgo. Your shop rate would be an expense just like your forms and yeah. eyes and ears. Yeah. If that helped. And then how do you figure in repairs and which ones are worth the time? Um, I, I think. Mentioned that last week. I was, yeah. had, a, had a brochure from a person. He said all, all repairs up to, you know, 40 or $50 will be done and then included in the mount. 
you know, they're not gonna, and we, I showed people the repairs on that deer that we tanned. Um, it probably had half hours worth of repairs yeah. in it. We will absorb that most often, um, unless it's something that's major and it's gonna take four or five hours, then we'd call the customer and, and tell him what we got to go with. Do you want it to disappear or do you want it to show, you know, kind of yeah. tell them what to expect from the repair and then that there's going to be an additional charge. If yeah. it's a major repair, I'd want to fix it. I think most people would want to fix it, though we've had people that they want half an ear and they want a hole in the ear and all kinds yeah. of different things. And sometimes that's just as hard. But um, I think another part of that too is those repairs that are included end up averaging out over the course of, if you had 100 blue cards, we would see a 12 hour deer, an 11 hour deer, a, a 13 hour deer. The, those repairs are probably where that fluctuation is. They average out and that's how we arrive mm -hmm. at that, at that mm -hmm. cost too, so. Mm -hmm. All right, I think that's all for questions. Is that it? Oh, good. Okay. Uh, but anyway, you're gonna wanna do this and, and be careful. I mean, prices are going up. Um, everybody's prices are going up. I'm sure we're gonna have uh, maybe in the fall and a price increase. We haven't had one um, since the catalog came out and we are, yeah. I mean, a lot of our prices are, we're paying a lot more than we did last year. Yeah. And uh, be aware of that. Also, when you get into um, elaborate mounts, like we don't didn't do anything about mammals, like bobcat on, on big rock bases or mountain lions, that yeah. sort of thing. Um, work with your customer, you'll, you'll notice if you go online and look at any of the big taxidermy shops, a mountain lion might be $2,200. And how can they do a mountain lion for $2,200? Down in the little, in the bottom says base not included. Um, okay. The base, many, many, many times, we have put much more into the base than we do the mammal. So yeah. customer comes in, we can do your mountain lion in that pose for $2,200. What are you thinking for a base? and then yeah. you work with him on that. If they want big elaborate walnut bookcase type thing that's gonna take you know, $1,600 to construct as well as the nice Dale Manning rocks, yeah. you know, um, you, you can get into a $6,000 base pretty easy. Easy, easy. And if you didn't charge for it, that could, that's one of those things that could put you out of business too. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Um, um, and you like doing that yeah. stuff so much that you can't quit. Yeah. It's very easy to put too much time into this and oh I'll make it up on the next one because wow. it is fun yeah and and if you did your 10 hour deer and you put a couple extra hours into it you can see how much your dollar per hour drops every hour you add into that piece um, it goes down so it's definitely something that you got to be aware of it's hard to stop but and I had a student one time tell me which was the best advice and my kids even bring it up uh, quite often is take care of your pennies and your dollars will take care of themselves. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, right. got a giveaway. Uh, yep. The winner. Oh, we don't have one. I think we decided on the business management. Oh sure, manual. Like business manual. Oh. Okay, yeah. And that That's winner nice <laughs> goes to Austin Rada. Uh, the oh, Breakthrough nice. Business Manual came out many, many, many years ago, and nobody, there, there's two that I know of, business productions for tax service, and one is the, the old Jonas Anno Van Veen, yep. um, that was Blue one, cover. and the Breakthrough Business Manual, um, exceptional, exceptional book, um, even though it was done at least 35 years ago, um, the figures may have changed, like, like you did that chart, and they have a chart similar to that, um, it's all changed, but you can see how it was done and you can put your own figures into it. Yeah. Back then a deer head was $250 and that was an expensive one. Yeah. All right, and I believe next week we will be- We're off, aren't off. we? Off. Got Memorial nice. Day weekend coming up and I think we've got a little tiny sale going on on that, on Memorial Day. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Ooh, that's sale. Yeah. And other than that, we will see you in two weeks. So make sure to like and share this video to be Thanks entered. Thanks for joining us. We got a deer head to cape. We better hurry <laughs> up. He's going to be back.
All right. You want to leave that out? 